Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now before going to today's broadcast, are you ready for your daily bread? Hey, it's your right. It's your right. You know the phrasing of it, Jesus said, give us this day. Ah, that gives, that should give you some boldness when you ask. Give me my, give me my. Give me my. I'm not begging God to do something for me. I'm demanding for what is mine. Even today, God have assigned daily bread for you. Today, there is daily bread for you. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, we just bless you for your love. You know, anytime I think about this, I see the love of God. But men reject the love of God. It's not amazing. There are people who confess Jesus as Lord of their life, but they reject his love. Can God bless a man? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to be careful when you say those things. And then, you know, quickly, if someone goes, God does not give people money. Who told you God does not give people money? It's an error to think God does not give people money. It's wrong to think so. Because you, you can't limit the power of God. And you can't try to use your brain to understand the power of God. I'm saying all this to you because when you make demand for your daily bread, open your heart. Allow God to do it His way. Don't try to micromanage God's ways. You know, there are, there are some of you, all you can think about is God just give me increase in, at my job. No, sir. He can manage you well, even with the lessened level of pay at work. No, now, I'm not saying manage what you have paid. I'm saying he can take care of you well. You can be earning 30,000, what the uh, minimum wage in Nigeria right now is 30,000 there. You can be earning 30,000 there and then you build a house. You, you live the best life you want to live. How is that possible without stealing? You see, that's what you think. It is possible with the blessing of God. It is possible. The blessing of God is not only for people that have large wages. No. You don't know God. You don't know God. You, you don't know God loves to. He loves to shock the world. He loves to challenge the status quo. That's God for you. And if your mind doesn't flow with his mind, you have a problem working with him. He wants to change the status quo with your life. Who told you you need a better job before you can live a good life? Who told you so? And you don't need to steal. You don't need to be corrupt. You just need to open your eyes and see what God is showing to you. Hey! Are you ready to make demand for your daily bread right now? Praise God. Say with me, Father, I make a demand today for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes um, when we teach some practical things, the, the whole essence is to expand your mind. See? So, um, you, you're opened, you, your, your heart is open to all the possibilities of God. So, one can share his testimony and say, this is the steps I took. And this is the result I got. He's not necessarily telling you to take the same step and you will see the same result. No, that's where people get into error. Both the preacher and the listener. For example, a man can say, I was earning minimum wage, for example, 30,000 naira for so long, and I was just battling with it and battling. One day, I told myself, I said, I'm tired of this lifestyle. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be, so anytime I receive my salary, I'm going to sow it. You, you hear some, you hear people talk like that. I'm going to sow it. And then I started doing it, I started doing it. And after three months, I bought a car. After three months, and I went, huh? Huh? How? 
Now, sometimes, um, even though testifier doesn't go into details, which I believe um, details would help, okay? Details because what God did, it's not like you, you started doing this and you woke up one morning and you saw a brand new car. No, there are processes that took place. There are processes that took place. See? So, if you, you need to understand the process that took place. You know, so that you too will be able to repeat the same thing. Now, to the hearer, all you hear is that I was tired of receiving the amount of salary because it was not even doing anything. So, I decided to um, start giving it away. So I decided to start giving it away. Now he said he decided to. What he may not tell you, and, and this is why I'm sharing this with you. What he may not tell you is that he was talking to the Lord about it and then the Lord said to him, if you're tired of this lifestyle, then do this. Start giving me your salary and you'll see what I'll do to you. Can God say that kind of thing? Of course, yes. Yes. Now, someone may share that testimony in another light. In other words, with the intention to deceive people. How do I mean? So, this brother shares how he made up his mind and then he started giving his salary to God. However, he gives it maybe to church, to his pastor to whatever, wherever he gives it to. And so maybe he says, instead of giving it to the church or to my pastor, okay? And in three months time, I got a car. Everybody said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now what he may not say is it took him five months, four months to get to that point. And, and how did it begin? How did he get to that point? The word of the Lord came to him and said, if you want to trust me for bigger things, then start putting your mind off that pay that they are paying you. And he said, how? Okay, I'll try. I'll not put my mind there again. But after one month, his mind is still there. And he said, ah, God, you know. And then the Lord now let him, hey, if you don't want to put your mind there, then give it away. So you know it doesn't exist. Ah! And he'll take another two months to process that. And uh, he, then he'll build up his faith to that point. You're like, hmm. okay, let me try it. Lord, I'm doing this, so this is my act of faith, so I'm doing... He said, he, even him may not understand that God has been dealing with him. See, so he doesn't tell you all this process. He just goes straight to the point that I just made up my mind and I'm going to be doing this. And then I started and then three months down the line, I got a new car, okay? So, now that's by the way. So, he got a new car. He doesn't share with you how he got the new car. He said, God just opened the door and I got a new car. What door did God open? How did that come about? He doesn't share. Now, not because he got a new car in a wrong way. No. Well, sometimes we don't understand why the details are important. So that's him, okay? Now, the other person listening to the testimony say, Ah, Lord, me too. I'm going to start giving out uh, my salary. And then he gives out his salary. He's done that for seven months now. And man, he, he begs at the end of, <laughs> he begs around. And he's not seeing any result. Why? He didn't understand the process that brother went to. True. Okay, then the pastor who, um, please permit me, I'm just giving examples of this, okay? Some of you understand what I'm saying. So the pastor who wants to use that to his own advantage, he said, didn't you see that brother? He made up his mind that he will, stop, he will start giving his salary to church or to my life. And three months after he started doing that, God blessed him with a brand new car. I, I tell you today, if you will only make up your mind to start giving your salary. See, the thing was not giving his salary. See, see how we turn the whole thing and mix it up. Now, the pastor may be amazed also say, wow. So I'm this anointed, you know, <laughs> or our church is this anointed. I guess what? so that he wants to use that to his own advantage to say there's an anointing on my life. 
In the other way, also in behind his mind, now not every pastor, now some pastor, behind his mind, say, ah, if 20 people are doing this, church will explode financially now. And then at the end, they will be blessed just like brother A was blessed. So, hey, try God. Start giving your salary. But the thing they miss out is the journey that brother took. Growing up to the point where he had to obey and understand what God is saying. We hardly teach that part. You know what I'm talking about. So you want to find out how will God tell you to start giving your, your salary. Then that's when you're like, wow, actually, God told me. You know, I, I had, um, there's, there's a testimony I had Kenneth Copeland share about how it's a popular story how um, he sold an airplane. And I think 11 days later or so, I think say 11 days later, he received a new airplane. Now, I first um, read this story in Jerry Savelle's book, The Footsteps of a Prophet. So Jerry Savelle told the story of how he, he had gone to pray with Kenneth Copeland. And of course, Kenneth Copeland had invited us when he started working with Kenneth Copeland. And then they were praying together. And Kenneth Copeland told him every morning, there's, there's something I'm trying to get the mind of God about. So every morning, come to my room and we'll pray for is it 30 minutes to one hour. And then you go back and I will repeat this for several days. So Jay Savell went and said, I'm, I'm praying to God concerning the expansion of the ministry and, and, and we need a better airplane and, and stuff like that. Okay, so Jay Savell will go. And just, according to Jerry Savell, he wasn't praying, he was just watching what Miracle Plan was doing. Okay, go about pray and pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Then he'll open the scripture and then he'll read the scripture out loud. And then he'll, he'll pray in the spirit and pray in the spirit and pray in the spirit. And I think by the third day or the second day, they finished praying and he left. Then Kenneth Copeland called him back and says, I've gotten it. I've gotten it. So Jesus said, what did you get? He said, the wisdom of God concerning what to do. I said, okay, so what is that? And he said, God have instructed me to give the our airplane to so-and-so preacher. And Jesus said, looked at him like, are you okay, sir? He said, I'm going to, and I'm, said, and I'm going to do it right away. He picked up the phone and called this preacher and said, God have instructed me to sow our so-so-and-so jet to you. Jezebel was looking at Kenneth and like, how am I going to go back? <laughs> we, we, we flew that airplane to this meeting. How are we going to go back? And then, as though that was not bad enough, he had Kenneth Copeland and said, but you know what's going to happen? You will please give me a few weeks because I want to send that airplane for, to, for, for it to be um, revamped. Make it neat, then I'll say, hey, Jerry Saber, well, now I know something is wrong with you. You are, God told you to give your airplane to somebody. That's not good enough. You want to now spend your own money to refurbish the whole thing and, and send it to the person. <sighs> you know how you are, what kind of human being is this? See, now, so you heard Kenneth Copeland give the airplane over the phone. And then he took the airplane to, the refurbished it and did everything they are doing. And then he actually sent the airplane to the owner, flew it to him and gave it over to him. Now, Jerry Saber knew all that that happened. Exactly 11 days after Kenneth Cooper handed the airplane over to the person. Now remember, not the day he called the person to sew the airplane. The 11 days after he handed over the airplane to this person, Kenneth Copeland calls and said, Jerry, do you want to see a miracle? He said, come with your wife and your children to Susan's and so airport. He said, he told his wife, hey, um, get ready. We're going to Susan's and so airport. He said, what's happening? He said, Kenneth Copeland said, if I want to see a miracle, and I think I want to see a miracle. And then they drove down to that airport and they saw Kenneth Copeland standing at the tarmac. He said, wait, just wait here and watch. Look at the sky. And then they saw the lights and the airplane landed. And someone walked up and said, this is for you. And handed him the keys, the documents and everything. And Jerry Savell went, whoa. This man gave an airplane 11 days ago. And 11 days after, he's receiving a bigger, better airplane. 
He went back home that day and said, Lord, I've seen a principal. I'm going to give everything in this house, my TV, the chairs. I need anything. I need a better one. I'm going to give. So while he was processing all that, the word of the Lord came to him. He said, you don't do it. He said, why, God? Why would you bless me? You don't want to bless me. I saw him do this. I saw God said, you don't do it. He said, Lord, what should I? And then the Lord said to him, said, you continue walking with me. And I'll build you up to the place where you can start doing that by my instructions and you will see the result. But Lord, I need result now. I need result. See, hey Lord, if there's any building you want to build, just give me one day, one day course. I'm ready. Just build me up. I said, God said, no. And so God slowed him down. And Jerry Savell, who's going to be with the Lord now, became one of the men I know enjoy the favor of God like <laughs> Now, here's the point. I, I, heard, I first heard that testimony from Jerry Savell, right, in his book. And so what, what you know about is Kenny Copeland and Jerry Savell were praying for the mind of God concerning the airplane, concerning their ministry and what to do. And God spoke to Kenneth Copeland, right, that morning. And Jerry Savell heard what God said to him. Jerry Savell saw him when he made that call. And then he refurbished the plane. Eleven days later, after he gave the plane, a new airplane came. Now, years after I read that testimony in his book, I heard Kenneth Copeland teaching. And then he spoke about this testimony. And Kenneth Copeland spoke about how God had spoken to him about giving that airplane for several months. And he was like, Lord, if I give this airplane, how am I going to survive in ministry? See? And, and he, he battled with that and battled with that until finally he came to that point where he's like, okay, Lord, if, if this is what you want me to do, I'll do it. Just show me how I'll do it. So when Jerry Savell met him in that prayer, he wasn't contemplating whether to give or not to give the airplane. That was when he had made up his mind to give the airplane. Now he was trusting God for exactly who and when God wants him to give the airplane. Now this was several months coming. Are you following what I'm saying? Now what I'm teaching is very important. In faith, because you want to walk by faith. So this was several months coming. God had instructed. He had battled with it. He had struggled with it. He has fought with God. And then he, because he, when God tells you something, it's the truth. So no matter how long you keep it, you'll get to that point where you have to accept. Okay. okay. So Jerry Savell met him at the point where he accepted. Now, I don't know if Jerry Savell knows this back end. I'm sure he must have heard. But from the, the point he wrote that book, okay, he just shared this part. And these are the things that followed. So now, the original truth is this. For many months, there was this battle until he got to that place where he accepted the mind of God. And then he asked God, okay, Lord, I'm ready to give it. So give me direction on who to give it to. And God gave him direction and he accepted and then the miracle happened. So you see, the main thing there is the word of God coming to your hearts. That's the main thing. The word of God coming to your heart. It's not to see what somebody else have done. I say, oh, I'm going to do the same thing. And so people try it and they don't get the same result. And then they come back and say, <laughs> Are you sure that brother or that sister was telling the truth? Because me, I don't understand again. You know, as though some people, is only they are too special to God. Only them, every time. You don't know their dealings with God. Begin your own dealing with God. Now, you see, now you cannot be reading the Bible. See, guess what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, this is from what I was sharing with you yesterday. You cannot be reading the Bible. And in the Bible, you now read where God say, go and sow your car. You won't see that. You won't see that. 
I get what I'm saying. Rather, you be reading your Bible and then ideas will be coming to your mind. Say, where did they where did they pay tithe in the New Testament? I cannot see any place where they pay tithe in the New Testament. Too. So this tithe thing that they are making us to pay, say me, I don't understand. Hmm? After all, eh, in the Acts of the Apostles, never say they pay tithe. Paul didn't instruct Timothy that he should collect tithe. At least we should have seen one place that. Eh, they, they were receiving tithes and offering. You understand what I'm saying? You're trying to find it in the Bible. You did not go to God that commanded Abraham to tithe, to ask him how important this tithing thing is. You're trying to find where the tithe in the New Testament, according to you. And then you come to the conclusion where there is none. Since there is none, I don't think we are under any uh, uh, command or obligation to tithe in the New Testament. Where, what are you looking at? The Bible. You left God and you're looking at the Bible. You will end up in error. You will end up in error. I'm telling you the truth. What you are supposed to do is to go to the Lord and say, Lord, this thing you commanded Abraham to do, can you talk to me about it? Because I want to know, why did you command Abraham to tithe? And then you wait for the Lord. Don't think he's going to speak to you. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you to ask this question. Oh yeah, sit down, sit down, let me tell you. No, sometimes we wait on him for months, for weeks, for years sometimes. Depends on how important that information is to him and our level of understanding. Because sometimes when you're in so much error in your mind, it takes the Lord a long time to bring you into the place of truth. Not because he would wait. No, he actually starts the moment you accept. But you see, he begins to lay foundations and foundations and foundations and foundations until you get to that point where he can ask you, okay, now that question you asked me two years ago, I want to tell you the answer. And then you now say, ah, two years. No, no, no. He began to tell you immediately. <laughs> Our time is up. Praise God. Oh, Father, we bless you for your truth. Your truth is so important to us. And you're teaching us how to assess your truth. Thank you. Thank you. We open our hearts and we are blessed by you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.